We are starting with Efrat Valor Moses. She is an Israeli born, New York based cross disciplinary artist. She has a, a BFA in painting and sculpture from Bezalel and is a grant recipient of the Israeli Cultural Foundation. She was chosen as one of the 10 most promising Bezalel artists of the 80s at the inauguration of the new Bezalel's campus on Mount Scopus. Efrat exhibited in over 30 group shows and five solo exhibitions in the US, Israel, and Germany. Efrat, Bevokasha. Thank you, everyone. And um, thank you for hosting this absolutely fabulous series. And I'll go straight away and share my screen. Um, the first painting I wanted to show is a straightforward art about art representation of our theme, very dry. Uh, I did this painting, uh, it's called Unveiled after a controversy in the art world regarding a painting that was considered a German school 19th century painting. In 2009, they did forensic analysis, fingerprints, carbon, they lifted a fingerprint off of it and they decided this was a Leonardo da Vinci painting. So from a value of $22,000, it's now valued at $160 million. So the controversy and the upheaval, which is still going on, not everyone says that it's a Leonardo, that really intrigued me. But of course, this is, uh, you don't need to know the backstory. This is on the face of it, just an art about art picture about how something uh, is revealed or, um, or not revealed. Uh, here you see uh, this part is a rolled canvas. It's rolled up or rolled down if you want to uh, consider it that way. And beneath it, you see the process of making the art. Uh, what I loved about this is how our appreciation and how we look at our changes uh, by some controversy or by some um, forensic um, art. The next picture um, speaks for itself, or actually in this case, it uh, screams for itself. It's called Scream For Us and, um, or Scream For Us. And the force also stands for the four um, uh, uh, tries that uh, Monk, Monk had of his uh, painting. Here in the middle, this is a three-dimensional bust of a mannequin. Uh, if I go to the side view, you'll see that more. Um, you see the Statue of Liberty, it was a bit of a hope there, some um, light. Uh, as I said, this speaks for itself, but I also wanted to show this is because I actually um, detest this picture. <laughs> I, I liked it when I did it, uh, but through the years, um, I, I felt it was too, um, too bold to just appropriating uh, somebody else's art for this sake. But since the pandemic, I've become a bit more uh, forgiving of this painting because I saw that I connect to it once again. It does something to me and other people as well. During the pandemic, I um, had a hard time doing my really large works that are time consuming and construction and you have to go to the studio and whatever. Uh, and I discovered Yupo paper, which is not actually paper, it's polyurethane, 100% uh, free. You can put anything on it, it's an amazing medium. Uh, and I brought a clipboard upstairs, sat with my family and just painted. Uh, first time in years that I've done art for art's sake, nothing to do with my mission statement, just to enjoy it. And I chose um, a very ordinary subject to still life, but at the time, this is more than ordinary. This is a vaccine, this is the, the, the needle. Uh, I did a whole series of these just to enjoy doing it and enjoyed the fact that maybe in a hundred years, it means nothing. It meant nothing, um, I don't know, three years ago, two years ago, and it has all this meaning right now. Uh, you see the needle and all these things, how Yupa paper lends so well to rubbing and etching and scratching inside and you can really use it. Um, if we're talking about ordinary banal things, this I did in 2016 during the elections, uh, Hillary and Trump. It's called Can Become. The first one in the series, I did a few. Um, well, one was called Can Be, Can Do. And the first one was called Yes, We Can, which of course connects to uh, elections. And I was, this is an art about art picture um, as well, about you know, how a painting is uh, evolved and is, um, and is made. Uh, this here is a, actually um, a can 
with canvas draped all over it and it's three-dimensional. You have some garbanzo beans, which uh, allude to my heritage, but I actually came out from an art to art um, history um, standpoint. I was uh, thinking Morandi, um, the Italian painting who during World War II obsessively and only painted bottles and vases uh, art historians see it, um, you know, different ways standing for an individual, um, fear of reality, denial of reality, or the fact that you don't even put the war or the upheaval in front of you, it still speaks of it. So I decided to go with the tin cans to, um, to show the, the fear or denial of fear that I had at the time from this. Another reason that I'm showing is this, that when Dorit helped me curate the works, she thought that this was a roll, a toilet paper roll. And that actually blew my mind away because just to show you how things can become so relevant with time. You know, it changes and it grows and it uh, becomes something else. Back to the Yupa paper, I did a lot of sabras, um, uh, the menacing thorns, uh, the beauty, and it kind of conveys how I felt at the time. Did a lot of thistles a very undervalued plant, people overlook it. I find it a beautiful plant and I love the scratching that you can do with, uh, with the UFO paper and um, uh, all the techniques you can use with it. Here I took the pomegranates, um, specifically because of its uh, a connection to Judaism, hope, uh, plentiful, but also because in Hebrew, Rimon means hand grenade as well which is also, by the way, the ontology in English. It comes from pomegranates. So I like that play um, of uh, hand grenade. Weekend in the country, I did because my husband and I, uh, during the pandemic and the lockdown, did a lot of uh, elaborate picnics in the car. Uh, we wanted to run away from the city. We wanted to, uh, as though run away, but we never did run away because this uh, crazy elaborate uh, picnic in the car uh, always kept the, the city and what's going on in our, uh, in our thoughts. Uh, so the city skyline and this menacing meadow going into our head is part of that. So this Yupo paper was actually the ba uh, real breakthrough, breakthrough for me uh, that the pandemic caused because I haven't done arts for art's sake for years. I always were concentrated on my, my mission statement or the things I wanted to do. And this opened something that I don't think otherwise would have opened, just you know, passing the time and, and between downtown doing the art. This I do during the elections right now, it's called the writing on the wall. Um, art about art in a way, uh, if you don't know the backstory. Um, what you see is um, it's three dimensional because um, it's a panel and on it is the a hand of a mannequin wrapped with um, canvas, a real, brush uh, running down on a wire that is connected to a very loose canvas. My two intentions here to begin with was just to show my fear and how I felt condemned or we may be condemned and this is of course the, the sign of a condemned building and this is the hand of the artist or the creator but when I exhibit this and showed this people had wild interpretations which I'm asking myself I didn't have this in my, um, my back in the conscience because people saw it as prophetic they saw the blue X as a, a vote for the Democrats, uh, the red as a Republican. So that was, you know, the rebirth of this with other people's interpretation was very, very interesting to me. Um, this is called Don't Look Down. Um, don't look down on people, don't look down as a warning. It's a two, it's three dimensional uh, hanging, uh, uh, relief. It's uh, three wood panels and these are two cloth mannequin heads attached like trophies uh, looking down in different angles. Um, and in the middle is, this is canvas, uh, gessoed and knotted and uh, all these colors that make the flesh on both sides um, uh, are distributed between the two. Um, my social activism piece, I usually don't deal with these things that much, but it was such a uh, a loaded time, you know, Black, Ma Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, etc. And my last work, um, this is more indicative of what I usually do. This is um, six feet tall. It's a standing uh, sculptural painting. I do um, paintings that you walk around in like sculptures. 
Uh, on the front here, you see a peopleless New York skyline, and you see the spikes of La Lady Liberty, her crown. At the bottom here is the shackles from Lady Liberty's feet. Um, the real shackles are broken to, uh, to show em emancipation. I left these unbroken. Um, this is uh, canvases um, that are made from, uh, make a box so they can stand on. And if you can see in the seam here, there's something coming out. We'll see soon what it is. But this signified to me or showed, I wanted to show how I felt during this lockdown pandemic, how New York changed, how frightened it was, what our future will be, and how eerie it was. When you walk around the painting, um, you can see from the other side um, that there is a mannequin. This is a cloth mannequin. It's standing in the stance of La Lady Liberty uh, with no torch, no, um, no crown and the tablet is empty, it doesn't say 4th of July. Um, kind of a little bit of art about art with this like as though the city and the oil of the oil color is seeping through the canvas and the color of the drapes and you can see the construction of the painting. Oops, I closed my thing. But um, that was my hopeful side. Uh, the side you just saw, the, um, I considered the hopeful side that um, if we stand up and hold up to our values and fundamentals that America was built in, uh, the city, the slaves of New York will not be slaves anymore. <laughs> so um, that was my presentation. Thank you. And if you have any questions, love to hear them or comments. Thank you so much. That was, uh, thought it was uh, beautiful. And. There is now time for a few minutes for questions, and then we can continue later with questions. People want to know about the paper name I see on the chat, on the chat. But before you answer that, first of all, I want to say that uh, there is one mannequin at the beginning. I think it was a uh, painting about a mannequin that looks like Edward Monk, like a spring. And I wanted to know what's inspired you about doing that. And my second uh, thing that I just want to have a, a note saying a note, the curatorial note about the subways that you showed. That I just want to say that this was like, for me, this was like the rich genesis opposite of this uh, vaccine and the, the injection. I don't know how, how you said it, uh, the one that oh, yeah. the shot itself. Um, and I thought this is the regenesis. It takes us back to the ancient fruit of the subways, the hardness of the Israelis land, and and you know it's it's for me it was the connection. So please talk about uh, your paper. People want to know, and there are more okay. on the chat. Um, do you want me to talk about it now or later? Yeah, go ahead. So. Um... Uh, first of all, UPO paper, it's Y-U-P-O, uh, it's not really paper, it's made of 100% polyurethane. Um, I would uh, advise you to experiment. A lot of people do DIY with it with inks, uh, but I didn't even know what it's used for, and I, you can put anything on it, oils, acrylics, you can rub it off. It's non-porous, um, things just have to dry, um, and that's what it is. It's, it's not paper, very durable, you can't even cut it, um, very hard. And this one, of course, was done uh, following 9-11. Um, and uh, it was a devastating time for all of us. And I called it Scream for Us or Scream for US. And um, this is one of the most notable or known uh, paintings in the world, probably. And everyone knows what it is. And usually when I do art about art, it doesn't really matter to me if people know the background. But I knew that people will know what this is. And it talks about uh, mental health. It, it talks about uh, devastation, et cetera. So I, I, le I lent it, but uh, I felt uh, later a bit that it was irreverent of me to use it. And it's used so much, it's a bit gimmicky. So that's why I really hide this picture and don't like it. But again, um, I, I'm a bit more connecting to it now. And uh, I know that other people have uh, like, you know, oh my God, uh, it's like right now, this is what's happening as well. Um, and then those are the two that um, you asked about and regard the Sabras, yes, I completely agree. And also I use all those other uh, images that we talked about the thistles, which is very much my Jerusalem upbringing. I used to collect thistles, I love them. 
the garbanzo beans in the cans, also um, a bit of my Israeli uh, background or a hint of it. Um, I use those things as well. Yeah, you can see the garbanzo beans in here. Okay, so if anybody else have a question for uh, Efrat, this is the time now. Oh, I see somebody said, when did I move to New York? New York, 1993, many years here. Um, but my father was American. I also, we worked for the Kellen Kayemet in Winnipeg and Boston, where he's from. So I'm from all over. But um, almost half my life is going to be now uh, already in, in New York. Any other questions for our front? I think we'll move on to our next presenter. Efrat, thank you. That was a fantastic presentation. I um, really love the three-dimensional effects that you are using. They're so creative. And I, you know, I understand what you said about uh, repurposing a, a famous piece, but I, I feel like you made it something new and um, interesting in a new way. So I applaud that. 